it just needs to be blonded. You know, there's this thing called. A helped me really come out of my shell. And I have never felt more where I'm supposed to be than when I'm in this room with all of you guys. You're worthy of anything that you set your mind to. I changed my mindset and everything in my life changed. Support each other. It's time to unite. Hi, Mary. How are you? Hi, guys. Hi, everybody out there in uh, in Facebook land. And I think we're also streaming on YouTube. Um, that always gives me chills every time I see that video. Um, and I know that you've been to several of our One Shot Awards. And uh, I don't know. It's just uh, it's always exciting to see that video. How are you, Anthony? I'm very well. I'm very well. I think that's uh, it shows really the power of... Um, the one shot awards, you know, I mean, it's um, everybody gets so excited, has such a goal to achieve and everyone needs a reason to to enter these awards. And that is such an amazing. Well, everyone needs a reason to be creative and the awards give you that. Yeah, I think um, what what I'm always excited about. And so you guys, first of all, let me introduce. Um, we have a whole new series that we're starting called Meet the Judges. And um, every year people ask us, you know, who the judges are for one shot. And uh, we always talk about the fact that it's the best hairdressers in the world that that make the selections that choose who our winners are. And I think that that's important because I think unless you're a hairdresser, it's really, really hard to, to understand all the pieces of it. When you're an award-winning hairdresser, one of the best hairdressers in the world, which of course you are, um, you know, it's, I always think that, um, I don't know, you guys have seen so much and you've done so much, so you really understand. And the one thing that I'm really excited about is Anthony's our first guest on Meet the Judges for One Shot. And uh, this couldn't be any more special to me because, um, and I say this all the time, but Anthony, you really helped train my eye over the years and uh, working with you on photo shoots and you even let me uh, get behind the camera a couple times, um, which was really- you do, you do a great job. I mean, you know, and that's very nice of you to say, but we, we have, you know, the, We've known each other a long time, and I think you know what you've achieved there is is incredible. You know, it's yeah. allowing people to really have um, the opportunity to shine and to create and to be be seen and noticed. And I think that's so important. I remember always um, entering awards because, for me, they're so important in the sense of building up your creativity and giving you a reason to be creative as as an individual and as a team. You know, so right back from uh, the eighties, eighty six was. Um, the first time I entered an award, uh, which were the British Hairdressing Awards. And, and from there, you know, it's come, you know, such a, to an amazing point, especially the one that you achieved there. Yeah. You know, one shot is worldwide, you know, and it has people from all over, from all different countries, and, and able to enter as individuals. And I think that's what's very important because, you know, in, yeah. the, in the past it's always been about teams and, and the salon and all different kinds of things, but really you're, you're there and it's, it's open to whoever wants to be creative and, and uh, show their skill. I think, um, you know, the thing that we tried to do when Kevin and I first came up with this idea, literally in Mexico, drinking a lot of margaritas, um, is that we really wanted to be able to celebrate real hair being done behind the chair, which is really where it all started, right? I mean, it's all started. Um, wait, you're drinking vodka. It's only 10 o'clock here. Can I do it too? So. It's <laughs> water. It's water. Uh, it's water. Oh, that's right. Okay, it's water. Um, so, so um, 
you know, we had this idea that um, that there was so much talent that was out there on Instagram we knew was really democratizing hair and giving people who really hadn't had a voice or all that money to do a photo shoot the opportunity to be able to to be seen and to be valued. And um, and it really it's amazing that we've had over a million entries from over 95 countries from around the world. That's and, incredible. Incredible. And, it really is like we, yeah, this year, even with coronavirus this year, we hit um, over, I think it was about 220 or 30,000 entries, even though we lost about six weeks. So, um, so I want to just talk with you a little bit about, so the first thing that we did, yes, was real hair behind the hair. Um, but what I think has been really amazing about this particular competition is the fact that, um, that, you know, people always laugh and say, okay, so yes, 25 people get nominated in every category. Yes, some categories have 60,000 entries. But the thing is, is like that everybody kind of wins because everybody works hard. You know, they they work really, really hard at doing great hair. Um, and, you know, and they, they study, they study their photography and all of that. So at the end of the day, let's say that you don't become a nominee, you still, you know, did better. Yeah, you, better. Had you know, you got a reason to learn and a reason to... Yeah. You yeah. built your personnel and we all win because of that. So I want to take you back to some of the competitions that you were involved in. And I know several years ago, as many of you guys know, I mean, Anthony, he's, he's a genius hairdresser, but he's also a genius photographer. Walk us back to the time when you were doing hair, because I love this story. And I remember you telling me that even though you could see the hair from the side, the photographer wasn't getting what you wanted. And what made you decide to pick up a camera? <clears throat> well, you know, it's... Um I started, obviously, I, my brother used to do session work and I started to do session work when I was 17, 18. And then from there, it was really, you know, working with a lot of photographers, but it, there was always that element that what you what you saw, they didn't see. They saw what they saw. So it, it became really apparent that, I, you know, you'd start art directing, but the real the real thing you needed to do was get a camera. And my, my, my wife bought me a camera and I left it in the cupboard for a year, literally. And, you know, not really knowing what to do. And then all of a sudden it just dawned on me, okay, I'll shoot on automatic. I said to Pat, you know, we're both hairdressers, you do makeup, I'll do the photography, and we both do the hair. And that's how we started, really, and that was back in the 80s. And um, what it allowed us to do, really, was to create our own style and, and our own feeling, because when we were shooting before that, we were all using pretty much the same photographers. So we looked like also runs. It just depended, you know, you know what you did and what time. And, and you know, I was... There was a lot of great competition at the time, Rob the Better and Trevor Sorby and Irvin Rusk, and these guys were doing great stuff. And you'd almost get mixed up if you did something that was good. You, you wouldn't even recognize it sometimes. So, but when we started doing the photography, um, that really set us apart. You know, we became you know leaders in what we were doing. It, it made us have our own complete kind of identity, and it, and it tied in really great with the the actual time when the awards started because. I think sometimes you need a reason to create and a reason to do something. And it certainly gave us the reason to compete and to go forward and to try and, you know, you know do well in it, try and win, obviously. The, the goal is always win it. And, um, and, it, and it just fitted in really well. But the story is, is crazy, really, because it was there for a year, just sitting there at the camera. And uh, then it was just really getting the courage to do it. And then I realized, you know what, there, there, there was this film called... Um, um, it was like a neg it was print film. It was a, like a print, a cop. What was it? it not wasn't negative. Positive film in yeah. a little kind of machine, and you, you'd put it out, and uh, and you would see exactly what you'd done after two minutes. So it was a great way. It was like Polaroids, but a whole strip of it. And uh, uh, in those days, you, you could actually use it. You know, it was terrible quality. I mean, if you look at it today, to what we're doing, but it, it had some kind of creativity behind it. It had some kind of feeling, and I think that's really where it spurred on to start doing. Photography and there was a, a I did this shoot with a photographer and the pictures were okay uh, But then I took him to my friend who was a retoucher and in those days a printer and a retouch It was all kind of done by hand and we did some effects on them really graphic and, and then from that it, it became almost you know what I can do this Let me let me start shooting and then work with all the other processes that allow you to make the pictures how you want But most important was I was able to get the angle I wanted you know, and we're going to be looking at some of your pictures that you've chosen. We've, we're asking all of our judges to actually, as we um, get, you know, give you guys the time to get to know them, some of the pictures over the years that have been their favorites. But I want to talk to you about like what you're talking about now, because one of the things that I think is the biggest mistake that's made in photography, in, I should say, in award programs on an annual basis across the world, not any one particular one, 
is that people look at what won the year before and they try to almost duplicate what won the year before thinking that that's what the judges are looking for. And I think that we feel the opposite. Like if you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, nothing ever changes. You know what I mean? Can you talk to the audience yeah. about that? Like you have to be brave to go to, you know. Yeah, you, you, yeah, absolutely. You absolutely have to be brave. I think, you know, I think you need to look at not what won the, the year before. You need to have a look at what the trends are within, uh, you know, within fashion, within, uh, you know, youth photography. I mean, you there's, it's like a little bit like when grunge started happening, you know, it was a completely different look, a different feeling, how you shot, how you work with the girl and everything. So it was important to, it's important to have a look at, really what's new and what's going on i think if you try and do what one it, it, it's it's not the right thing what you can do you can look at how close it is you can have a look at the kind of styles in the sense of you know what the hair is but i think more than anything it's creating a whole feeling if you're doing a collection it's creating a feeling of what you believe in you know if you believe in fancy hair then do what you're doing in fantasy and really take it to to another level but don't try and emulate the, the you know what everyone else has done i think you need <clears throat> we're all learning and we all need to learn from somewhere. So it's not, you know, working and emulating things that are out there is not wrong. But to win, you need to, to have something fresh and different that will then, you know, be something that the, the judges will see that is not the same as what they saw before. And I think that that's very relevant if you look at, you know, some uh, really kind of, uh, you know, trendy magazines in the sense of like ID or, you know, things that will just give you a different flavor of photography. And I think I'm seeing this more anyway, where it's more kind of, you know, you're seeing more kind of um, the real kind of texture within hair, the real kind of look in, in a face, not always being a, you know, perfectly made up, perfectly perfect model and perfect hair. I think it has to be something that really, you know, expresses what's going on today. And I think if you do that, then, you know, you're, you're breaking the boundary and you're moving forward. I want to talk with you about that because um, I thought what was interesting is if everybody out there follows the British Hairdressing Awards this year and this last year, the last couple of years, we've seen, uh, you know, collections that are classic collections that you would have seen for years. You know, then you see something that's extremely editorial, um, you know, to the extent that we haven't seen it. And you're seeing, I think there were like three different types of images. You saw a lot of black and white as well this past year. Um, you saw a lot of cropped images that were, you know, parts of it. Like, so what's interesting is um, because, like, if you look across the world, we know Australia does a great job of editorial hair. Like, they just do very little Photoshop. Um, mm -hmm. Some do, but you know, really strong editorial hair. Compositions are always different. There's one big image. You know, some that are back. It's not a consistent composition that we see more in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, but British was really different this year, and it was almost like you said, like ID magazine meets you know, like the old, you know, the the classic uh, British hairdresser of the year. Where do you think this is going to go? Because you know what I'm saying about how different these images yeah, are. I mean, you, you, all the finalists in the British were very, very talented people, you know, and yeah. they did an amazing job. Yeah. But there, were, there was a difference within um, the, the kind of work. There was a very kind of very fresh approach in two or three of the, the people yeah. that you didn't necessarily know who they were as well because it's not written there. And uh, that had really kind of adapted that kind of idea. And, and I think we try and adapt that in Fringe a, a lot. We have yeah. a lot of photographers that do that kind of different kind of hair, really. Yeah. And, and I think um, that you've got to stick to what you love. I mean, I don't think you need to just try and think, oh, I better do that because that might make me win. I think you've got to stick with what you love and what, what you're about and how you really see yourself growing. Because if you stick to something, you'll own it, you know. And I think very much the, the approach of what's going on, this will it'll be a slow transition I will I'm sure we'll see a lot of that within one shot you know with, with the individuality and everyone coming out because everything is so now you know it, it, you know what you see we all see it right now wherever you are in the world and I yeah. think that, that element of the that kind of grungy photography I know I know what you mean it's a, it's a, it's got a great feel but you've got to get it right you've got to do it with real people you've got to do it with the kind of look that that suits that person I think one of the things that we see is we use models and we make them who they're not and I think that that sometimes shows. And I think if you can really kind of, if you have something really strong in your mind, you've got to use someone who is really what you're trying to share and what you're trying to do. And I yeah. think that, that will be probably more of the direction where things will go in the future is where you really have that person is not just someone that you've done something on, but they, they, they live it as well and they're part of that whole feeling. Like, then it's more true to what it's doing. And yeah. you can see that. You can see yeah. that from the photography. So let's talk about... Let's, let's, let's come down to see me. Hello. Pat. 
Pat, Just come say hi quickly. Come say hi, Pat. Yeah. The, the uh, Anthony will always say the better half of their team. Oh, there you go. Hi. Well, I think she needs a haircut. What do you oh, reckon? Do you know yeah. any good hairdressers, Mary? Yeah, there you go. I, I don't know. I, I think you're living with one, right? <laughs> like yeah, we get, we get ourselves there, yeah, yeah. right? The spouses are the ones that never get them. <laughs> I miss you guys. I wish we could come yeah. see you. Um, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Let now, I, I think at the moment, you know, you've got some great talent out there. And I think, you know, obviously this is what you've always done, Mary, is you're, you've always shown everyone, you know, the talent that is out there. You know, as a, as a hairdresser myself and part of a team, part of Tony and Guy originally, and still, you know, within the States and, and being very, very much a, a TG, you know, you know, it's getting, it's getting that, you know, that strength in what you do and, and trying to make it, you know, as strong as you can. Really. Yeah. So let's take a look at some of your pictures. And as we go through them, because I think it's fun to look at images. Um, okay. I also want to talk with you about collections as well. I want to talk about Infringe too. So Anthony was just talking about Infringe um, for everybody that's listening. And I know in the US, uh, we don't know it quite as much, but Infringe is the most incredible magazine, you guys. It's actually on paper, really beautiful, thick paper. It's huge. It weighs how many pounds, Anthony? Not a lot. Too, too, too much. But I, I yeah. guess, you know, I lost my. My train of thought, I've got to be honest. But, but you know, it, it, in Fringe, I always thought, right, I'll be doing loads of stuff in it. But then I, I realized how much talent was out there, which obviously that's what you've always done. And for me, it was a different step. It was taking a step back and really sharing what other talents out there, not talent that always that has big salons and whatever, but just individuals, even individuals that are not hairdressers that use hair as, 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 a, as their material to create art. And, and I think that that became very apparent is giving something back to the ones that. Like I was given that opportunity, you know, very much so. And I think it's great to be able to 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 do that for others. It's exactly what you're doing, which is great. Um, Anthony, what's the web? Um, what's the uh the Instagram for Infringe? Uh, it's um, Infringe dot com. No, Infringe dot com. Instagram. In, is it is it Infringe magazine? What's the Instagram? Infringe magazine. Infringe magazine. I'll, I'll, yeah, you guys make sure you check it out because it's really it's super cool. And as he was saying, it's it's artists like it's artists doing all kinds of alternative hair, basically. And um, and it's it just it's really, really cool. OK, so let's look at some of your images. Um, and I remember this. I'm, yeah, I like this one. I mean, yeah, it, it was when we were, you know, I've always done either do a bob or a, a transient or an undercut, you know, which are my, my favorite ones. But here it was really I was working with a young lady called Eleanor that did like the graphics for me. And it basically yeah. did, did the, the model. Pat did the makeup, which was the, the, the simple brightness on it. Uh, and then we painted the hair. And then on top, changing it to negative, positive, and just giving you all different versions. It, you know, it, there's, a, there's work done on it, but the hair is exactly what it was in the sense of the, the first one that you see, how it was painted, how it was cut. Uh, but for me, this wasn't uh, an entry for an award. This is something really just to, to kickstart where we were doing graffiti hair, which is it's quite a ways back now, and a good, a good, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 years ago. And, um, you know, it was something that was a lot of fun and, and something that we worked really, again, you need a reason to do stuff. So it was something that we did live on stage where we cut the hair and then spray painted it with all, you know, the, the kind of machines and everything. And, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's, um, it, I love this. I also just love the balance of it. You know, one of the things that we talk a lot about when we're looking at one shot images is balance and lighting and all of that. So you can see the way that you've balanced all of these images out. And each one, obviously, there's only one real main image and then yeah. the rest has been worked on in the sense of creating a different kind of graphic approach. But you still have to think of what you want to do. Yeah. And, you know, these aren't, I would not enter things like that to an award because there's too much going on. Yeah. But as an idea to make a film, to make something that, that generates a bit of energy and a bit of avant-garde, then it was something very simple style, but gave it a very avant-garde kind of feel. The other thing that I think is really interesting is um, is when you it's it is amazing to me sometimes um, I, it's, uh, you see people who are like so close to getting it right but to do this or to do like a lot of graffiti with a lot of um, of patterns on clothes and so forth that is so hard to get that right you know to get like that it, it's not this and it's, it's like it's like everything you know practice makes uh, well doesn't make perfect but it gets you closer. Yeah, and practicing and trying and doing and is that is the best things. I think you know when when you when you love this business and proud to be a hairdresser, then you know you're going to go for it to to constantly try and do better all the time. 
And you've got to realize that if you're putting 100%, 150% in, you should be very proud of what you do and, and great with what you've done. And then from there, you can move on and do better. Yeah. You know, think, you know be, be proud of what you're achieving and then spur, it spurs you on to do more things, even more creative. So um, in, uh, did anything that you saw out on the streets or wherever, again, graffiti, et cetera, or like some of the painted, I mean, definitely there's been a lot of designers that, uh, you know, that have done a lot of uh, spray painting and throwing paint and things like that. What was inspiring you on this collection and when was this done? This was done um, in, if I can remember rightly, about 2008, 2009. Um, it's, um, it was really a preparation for a show, I've got to be honest. It was we wanted to do an effect on, on the show. It was something, as a team, we all spoke about different ideas. There's quite a few versions we've done as yeah. we continue those. You know, there's, a, there's another one there, that were Battersea Power Station, where we still painted the hair and graffitied on the hair. And some of it we did with spray cans, not spray cans, but, yeah, spray cans. But we did also a video where it was all put into, like, a machine and a hose and, the, you know, and the pump to pump the you know, proper spray painters. So I had to learn how to do that a little bit. <laughs> but then, you know, we, we've done others where it's, um, if you go to, Heather can go to the other picture, which was a yeah. battle power station, uh, then we, we can have a look at that one as well. And it, and it gives you a similar, it's a similar approach on, on just really being creative. And this was done again, just before um, we we joined forces with Unilever. It was just in back in 2009, when, when uh, Heather brings it up, if she can. Heather, Heather, the next slide. No, the no, the one that we called um, Battersea Power Station. Oh, Battersea Power Station. Yeah, that's what we called it. I think she, well, she did name that. Uh, yeah, it's probably the very last one. There it is. There, you went there. Go back. There. Yeah. So uh, the, the same kind of principle with the hair, but here was different. It was it was spray painting it and then repainting it with a brush as well, and and just getting a you know a different effect. And that kind of worked with what she was wearing as well. You know, which was Westwood at the time. So we we actually kind of uh, geared it to what you know she was actually wearing. But that that was an editorial shoot again for these weren't done for competition. These were done to prepare for a show and to prepare for the kind of imagery that we wanted to promote as avant garde. You know, under the, the bedhead TG banner, and it was really to to really just show as much creativity as we can. I think, you know, this isn't something necessarily new, but we've seen a lot of this over the last 10 years anyway. And, the, you know, these, I don't, you know, I'm not saying that we we did it you know, first to do it. This has been done for years. People have done these things for years. You know, I remember in the 70s, someone painting all different things onto the hair there as well. I just think it's a, it's a matter of being brave and trying different stuff and, and trying to really just create some things that are, you know, different and kind of work to a whole total look. No, yeah, so it's a lot of fun. And I just want to I just want to point out a couple of things that just really balance this image out. I usually am able to use a pen. I can't since we're using uh, this other technology, which we love, though. But um, you see the red and the blue on the top of the hair. And just for everybody that's always like trying to understand how do you take, you know, this headshot that obviously has a lot of color. And it's what I was just talking about a few minutes ago. And then um, and then all the color that's on the leg. And you can see how the red and the yellow um really balance out and slightly the blue really balances out now on the on the bottom part so you see that balance what i think is really interesting is also about the light that's on the left side of um of the body so yeah. can you talk to us about about those kinds of things it's things that people aren't paying attention to most of the time we always say like i always say put a piece of paper put a pen put something over different parts of the image and see how it changes them. What does adding that light, you know, on no, that? I, I think um, it, it, there's two different kinds of um, thing that you can achieve. I mean, when you're in the studio, you can very, very much get, you've got to know what you want to achieve. I mean, sometimes, you know, things will appear that, hey, that looks great. And, and, and you can move on and get something that you're surprised with. But if you don't prepare, you know, you prepare to fail. And I think uh, here, we're at Battersea Power Station. It was very, very difficult. I was working with Michael who made a great film for us there. Yeah. And, um, well, what we've got is stills because obviously when, when you're, you know, a lot of them are geared for film. So we can get the films to, to introduce the presentations and work with the, you know, with the shows and, and all those things that have been always very part, very kind of, very, very close, to, very close to my heart. But with the photos, you know, there you've got a light at the back, which is giving you, is light in the room. It's right, like this is the actual control room. <clears throat> and there's other shots which you don't have here. Other shots where you see all the controls, you see the girl walking. Within the film, you can see a story. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> when here, when you've got a still, you really want to see capture the hair and capture the mood. 
And this was a good feeling because we had the light from the back to obviously shine onto the, uh, to the, to the wall. We needed the light on the girl. And so there was lots of different pieces, but it came as well with the whole aura of the room and, and the way that the room was. So when you're, when you're shooting, you know, it's, it's, you're not going to get it perfect straight away. You're going to keep trying. You're going to keep working. You keep moving and never give up till you actually get something that's great. And I think that's what's important. And the way we're, that we have digital cameras and, you know, even with the phones today, you can keep taking them and get rid of them and then just keep the ones that are, are good. You don't have to store a load of stuff you don't need. Yeah. You know? and, I, and I think that, that, that um, see, for me, that was a transition really from using digital, from using film to digital. You know, I was actually shooting as well with film then because yeah. we still didn't really trust it. And we'd always, we'd always do both because that's all I'd done for like 20 years. So, but then all of a sudden you get to the point and then you get to a new level where, you know, it, that you're working with something that gives you an instant, an instant kind of um, uh, image that you can then work with and, and say, right, I've got it, or I can do a few more or whatever. Yeah. Which is quite difficult in the years past. You do a Polaroid, but you weren't sure what you'd captured exactly on the film. So you do quite a lot of film. The other thing that I just want to bring attention to, because we talk about this a lot, is um, is you can see how um, how strong and masculine this image is. Even with femininity, it's still really strong. Had you done, had Pat done a lip that was brighter or anything like that, would have blown up the entire image. So it's one of the things that we talk about, especially with the lips, is just making sure that you're really maintaining the feel that you want. And I think sometimes a strong lip. Uh, can destroy a picture. It can it can make the picture yeah. or destroy the picture. Well, I agree. I agree. I think you you have to you have to really work it and, and understand what you want to achieve. But then, <clears throat> you know, I think things come with as you keep doing it, you get better and you get you you create your own kind of taste and your own kind of vision of how you like things. And and I think that's what you've got to build. You've got to build your own identity and your own kind of style and, and uh, work that through. Let's go back to some. Let's go back to some of the other pictures. Yeah. One of the things I want to ask you about this. Um, is uh, now you know, let's talk about some of these images and then get in. When was this shot? Uh, that was shot in um, the, you know, well, I'm not sure, 80, 88, I think. 88. Yeah, and, you know, my inspiration was uh, Nick Knight. He had done a great shoot with uh, Yoshi Yamamoto. Yeah. And really, what I'd learned from that is not necessarily what was going on with, um, with the hair. The hair obviously was what we needed to do, but what was going on was the shadowing and the really strong black and white. And, and I think in those days, you know, you know, for me, it was all about learning and seeing and, and being able to see how I could then interpret my version um, from there. And as you get, as you move on and on and on, you become, start to create your own thing and you start to have your own style. But it's always important to, to learn and to see and to, to experiment how to go. So for us, it was, um, we call it Silhouette Collection. We did about, you know, eight different pictures. It was uh, one of my award-winning pictures, actually, when I got, Oh God, I can't remember when, but it was um, in the eighties to do with um, for British. The eighties to do no, I don't. It wasn't British. It was to do with avant garde. Okay. You know, the, 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 there was a you know we won something every year, but it wasn't British every time. Yeah. yeah. We won it. We won it three times. That was good enough, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. going back to the. That, you know, I enjoyed that photography. But you see, that was before computers, um, because this was all sprayed by hand. Once we had the print. You know, and we, we kept the hair as, you know, very true to life. There was a, you know, a little bit of retouching, I'll be honest. Um, but, you know, the real retouching was to bleaching out all the sides of the, the face and then creating that darkness through the other side. So that, that, it was a style of photography that wasn't being done at the time within the hairdressing world. And I think one of the, the things that we did when I started to take pictures, what happened was we tried to adapt a, a fashion to it and try and make it, more that it looked like you would see in magazines, you know, not just a, a professional hairstyle that was just for the trade. And I think we, we were getting a little bit trapped in that and, and just trying to take it out and take it so it could be something that would be in, a, 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 you know, a fashion magazine or, you know, some yeah. kind of magazine that wasn't a professional magazine. But it's still, but I think the thing is, is like sometimes I, I feel like hairdressers have gone too far towards fashion. Mm -hmm they forget the hair you know what I mean like and that's one of the things that I think you know some of it's too much hair and then some of it's too much fashion and then the hair gets missed yeah uh, especially if you're shooting like re really low to high you know and then the head is so small and it's hard to really see that I think that's one of the things that we always say with one shot like if you're doing British or anything else you're getting these giant images that people can see but when yeah. you're doing Instagram you're going to have to pop that shot yeah. in 
you know, so we can actually see the hair a little bit closer. Because I do think that's something that um, some people who might have won in past years struggle have struggled with because it's too well, much. I, I, think, I think people have to be careful that we're not we're not uh, selling fashion; we're selling hair. Yeah. And yes, we are. You know, hair creators and fashion interpreters. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we, you know, we've got to remember that. But then, when you're looking at it as a judge, or you're, you know, when you actually see something, you want to see the hair. You yeah. want to see how it relates to the rest, but you don't want to see too much fashion. You, you want to see more about what the hair's telling you. And it also depends if you're going very much into a feeling where everything is tied to the fashion. Fine, but you know, you can do you can do pure hair, no clothes, just bare shoulders. It's all about the hair. Very, very little makeup, and just really show shape and design and feeling and texture and, and movement. And, and, you know, that I think sometimes allows it to be fresh. And I think that's what you're seeing a little bit more. Yeah. You know, so people aren't trying to rely on all the makeup and all the other things and keeping that a little bit rawer, much rawer, photographed rawer, and really just seeing that, uh, what you can actually achieve with hair. Well, and black and white, I mean, I've always think black and white by far has, you know, the most emotion. I mean, it's easier to, cap let's put it this way, it's easier to capture emotion with black and white than it is with color. I, I really believe that. Um, but there's so, I think black and white always has so much opportunity for geometrics as well, to have the geometric look and the shadowing and everything too. But um, Marissa, I think Marissa was saying on here on the questions and so forth, this, this image allows you to see both the fashion and the hair, which I think is really interesting because I haven't seen anything like this in a long time. Like, I don't know if I ever have to tell you the truth. So it's a very- well, we, we tried to do it for, um, you know, every year, you know, in the days of Tony and Guyane and continuing with the uh, TG, we've always tried to create uh, a book every year to create images and share all the kind of creativity that was done within the company. Yeah. And, you know, it's so important to, to try and just try different things and, and uh, document everything. I mean, you know, you know, where documentation for us is, is everything, you know, I'm a hoarder. So you hoard everything that you do and you've got it. And I, I'm sitting in our library where we've got all the old books and all the old pictures. Let, let's move on to another one. If you flick through them, I can just kind of say, now this one here, this was, uh, this was um, Robert the Better photographed this. And I remember in those days we were working, this, these were the ones that won me a British hairdresser in, uh, you know what, I don't know when, I think it was 1992, uh, possibly. I think it was the last one when I got it. So I think it was, I mean, no, yeah, it was 92. And uh, we worked a lot at that time together. So it was where I wanted to, you know, I wanted to play around with the hair and he was playing around with the photography. And we worked together really on the, on it. Well, the photography was uh, more his because, you know, we, he couldn't work on the hair with me because it's a, they, they were for awards. So it was very much um, a different kind of style and a bit of fun. But it was, you know, where you can see it close up, you can see the hair. And there was there was um, eight of these, obviously, which at the time was, you know, I used to do four of one style and then four of another. But here we did a whole complete set. And, uh, yeah, it was it was great. It was, you know, it, was, it you know, got us to win. So I was very happy about that. Yeah. But again, it was, the, you know, I think this is more collage in the sense of, you know, you, you have different elements that you put in after. Um, but, you know, I think you, you, there's room for everything. Um, but what you'll see with the freshness of today is it's much rawer. You know, I think you've got to really kind of see how people use the phone and actually capture everything today and how the youth do that and how young people are doing that. And I think that is very relevant to stay young, to, to look at what the young are doing towards kind of keep you on track. You know, if you, but these were great. You know, Robert did a great job there. We had a lot yeah. of fun doing that. I love the, I love the space. Um, yeah, I think that's really cool. And of course, the hair and the model selections. I mean, look how different your models are today compared to what they used to be. You know, that's yeah. really very interesting. Let's move on to the next one. Well, this one was, um, you know, this was um, when we, we did a, um, a book called Color with Attitude uh, back in 1994, 95. And um, it was where we literally, I mean, before this, I'll be honest, you know, Vidal Sassoon always colored hair loads and, you know, but, you know, everyone was working a lot with color. We weren't doing very much. I've got to be honest, you know, we, we were just doing, doing what we did. And, you know, and we just, you know, it was just a time where we felt, you know what, we've we got to do more. We've got to have more in the salon coming into the salon. It, it's where we started doing chunks and lumps. I've got to be honest, we were probably one of the first to do this in, in the sense of just on a long head of hair. You know, and it was um, it was shaped at the side. It was cut. It was nice, but you know, you had all the chunk in the front, a bit at the back. And I did it with a boy called Matthew. It was uh, literally, it was, uh, it's all about sectioning and, and, and where you see. It's like doing anything. You know, I want that bit here. I want that bit there, and that's how we approach this. But I always like to look at this one because it was uh, a start of uh, a different kind of culture for us, in where we did a lot more color 
and you know and, and really started to build that area up you know before that it was a lot of highlights tints and and things and and that, and that actual book was done um you know so many years ago now but it was it was a lot of fun that set the presidents of having a really great kind of color team and, and creative team all working together on on cut and color you know and, yeah. and, but it, it's always I, I wanted to show because it it's always been one of my favorite in the sense of how things like this have been very popular you know each decade you get a chunk again you know and well, uh, we're going back to this you know this is a, obviously a very strong look right now coming back then you know the whole 90s look with the chunking out in the front especially so um it's a it's a very relevant image right now as well so yeah. beautiful. And that's why you know, i want to show i like that one yeah. i thought you know it was a good time when it was a real good coordination with the color and the colorists and the cutters and yeah. it was where we started to come you know actually give some input and say hold on a minute let's do let's think of what we can do you know because yeah. i think we started to separate it too much but every in everybody there's the balance between the both yeah for sure okay let's move on to the next one heather let's and no i wanted to share that one i mean it's one of many photographs i always do with a group you know and, and i think we started that years ago i started it you know first do it but we started it for ourselves um back in the days of tony and guy when we did the transient collection and then just carries on move, moving on. This is for, for Bed Ed, where you've got a, a different feeling of, you know, when it was actually just before the beards went nuts. I mean, you know, and uh, you had that kind of strong look. And that guy that's got it, he had it. So it wasn't something, oh, let's do this, that, and the other. And a lot of the, the models here were the way they were. Uh, a couple yeah. of them we had to kind of make them into to part of the, to the field, but the majority were already looking like that. Now we changed their hair, we did the kind of feeling we had, but they had the attitude and were living it. So that, that's where we started to try and find the right kind of characters to fit exactly what we're trying to say and use characters, not try and make people into a character that they weren't. And I, I, I think that, that's really where yeah, we, I love, there, that's we that's photographed that. the outside, you know, so there was lots of different styles of photography, but more, you know, to, to why I wanted to share this one, it's more about finding the right individual to, to share the feeling of what you want to do. And sometimes they're, they're just people that are there, they're, they're around. And I think fashion is created on the streets a lot of time. So it, it's basically, you know, why I wanted to share that one. It was, it was a lot of fun. And, then, you know, for me, I think I did one of the models, um, if I can't remember which one. But, you know, that's, that's a great team effort. And I think that's what it's all about. You know, it's, it's always been about team with me. You know, from you know Thomas and Akash and all the guys that have worked with us. You know, Nick in the past and and everyone that has been part of it has always been a great journey to to work together and get inspired and, and be creative. And I think that that's the the most important thing, really. You know, I know I, a lot of the, I want to ask you about that because I remember um, when we were shooting for the magazine, and I just remember well, over the years the fact that you've always had just I think a culture you know and a team that has been so dedicated to you but also you know you continue to hire very young people and I want to talk to you about culture for a second because first of all I don't know how many hundreds of thousands I'm sure it is hairdressers that you've trained over the last you know 30 years but you still keep your cool factor and um, how do you do that and how do you maintain that level of respect that you still have from all of these really young hairdressers well, and I don't know about the, the young heads. I mean, I'm an old hairdresser now, but I think, uh, well, the, the importance is really, you know, is to the way I was given the opportunity. My brother always made me inclusive and, 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 you know, all the people around me, you know, we all had the great opportunity. And I think as you go along, you've got to stay, you've got to see what the young are doing. You've got to see what the feelings are. You know, if you, if you want to stay relevant and stay, you know, it excites me, it excites me. New things excite me. Fashion excites me. You know, seeing new photography excites me. So it's always, oh, I've got to do it. I've got to do it. I think it's, I, I want to study it and I want to see it. And then, you know, getting the guys to do the hair, getting the guys to work and do mood boards and find all the bits that they like. We then find things that are relevant to, to youth. And I, and I think that's what's, um, that, that's what's really, really important. You know, and looking at what's going on with different photographers that are really kind of changing the mold and changing the, the feeling. And that's happened quite a few times you know, over the years, you know, David Sims or, you know, the, when, when Guido used to be with us and he worked with David Sims, they came up with some really great grungy, mad stuff. And that was right, right at that time, you know, yeah. just, you know, mid nineties. And uh, that was uh, very, very creative. And it kind of sets you on a path. You don't always see it straight away, you know, but, you know, if you keep looking and keep seeing, then eventually it kind of comes to you and you, and you kind of work it. But for me, I've always realized it's a, uh, for my own man, uh, you know, for my own sanity and you know creativity, it's always great to have people that are enthusiastic and creative and and want to do things that are different. 
you know yeah. so we've always we've always kept it as a team and uh, and worked it that way but i think you know me and pat have always kind of stayed in that kind of um mode because you know, you're doing shows you're always we're hairdressing as a young business regardless if you're old in it you're young in, at heart and i yeah. think that's really what <clears throat> that's probably the that's where it comes from is being a hairdresser yeah but that's they, where, you know, something special it's, it, it is special it's being a hairdresser is where you get all that youth and keep young people and work with them and and see how you can create and keep relevant yeah everybody though had to pull you kicking and screaming into the technology mode though huh <laughs> absolutely absolutely then, you know I, I know the benefit i know the benefits and i know everything that it can do and i love it the bits i've always, always have done but to do it myself has not been something that i've done you know i've always had someone to do it and you know and that's terrible really to say that but being in lockdown has, has created um, a new learning process you know yeah. you've got to do things yourself you've got to and I, you know i'm really enjoying it and people say well what have you done to keep yourself creative i've been learning that that's what's kept me creative <laughs> you know, learning all that stuff has been great and and looking how we can utilize it and how we can you know communicate better i think if anything you know we we communicate when we go and do a show get on a plane we go to a place we meet everyone we do a show or do a seminar or we meet to you know a conference or whatever it might be and you see everyone you go home and then you maybe see them again a couple of months later or you communicate. here we're communicating all the time and we're not even going all over the place no so yeah if, 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 this will stay with us we will do going everywhere but we'll yeah. do this too and it will just give us so much more advantage yeah. to stay connected I think that's yeah, really I agree. Now. I agree. So uh, let's go through these uh, images, and then I have a few more things I want to talk to you about. Okay, so what? So tell us about this one. This is here. Well, well, this I I, I I show this one because I always like it took ages to get the hair right, but you know it was you know her hair was short, so we did some short curly styles on her the day before. So then we ironed it all out, and I remember Nick was with me, and he, he glued all the pieces in, and, and we had them, then we cut them a little bit to make it look like a really long, shaggy style. But then we didn't want it just laying down. So, you know, it, we had wind machines, even though we were outside. This is in Miami. It was in the middle of the day. But because we put a, a flashlight on her, everything went darker. And then we had the light at the side. You can just barely see it coming through. And that's really just pointing at her. We captured, actually, the, the light. But it looks like it's a light in the picture, you know, lighting. Uh, the water i mean that looks like it's a building it's not it's a it's a pontoon thing you know when the, the, yeah. the boat comes out by the water you know where you get your boat or whatever what do you call it um a dock uh, uh, uh yeah a little mini dock i suppose yeah that's yeah. crazy that you shot that during the day yeah, yeah. yeah and the reason it's gone so dark is because we had quite a strong flash uh, on her and that's what picked out the hair and what you know it just made everything else darker it was, it was, it was quite you know i didn't really i'll be honest i didn't realize it would go, go exactly like that but we were playing with it and trying it. And, you know, if it, it, it was too light, it's blending too much. But then again, it's made it a moody picture. It hasn't made it a natural picture. And uh, the idea was to get a moody picture at the time, you know, to get something a little bit more graphic and shape and whatever. So, you know, it, 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 it didn't take too long, a couple of hours, I would say, you know, working it and trying to get there. Uh, but um, <clears throat> something up on this too that we talk about all the time is you know if this model didn't have that like really fierce look you wouldn't have been able to capture that yeah. that look i mean she looked like she you know you could have somebody with that beautiful hair and then have like more of a pageant girl face and i think this is where so many people go wrong with pictures is just not having the right model for the right look yeah i think this girl was very sexy anyway and she was very very good at, at, at modeling you know so her hair wasn't her hair wasn't ideal at all yeah. but she was yeah so for the type of thing we were doing at the time it was for catwalk so you know we were working on all, all the catwalk products and and, and it really you know she really kind of lived it and we've got films of it too which really make they're, they're really very strong because she could really act all the way through it and i think she that's really what you've got to find sometimes is the right kind of model that'll be able to express and and to create that to turn the picture make the picture come alive you know and yeah. I, I think that's important yeah you, you, you do want that the right hair sometimes you want to do especially if you're going to cut it it's got to be what you need and what you want but to really show it and capture it, you know, there's a balance of everything. You've got to have a bit of everything in it. You've got to have the right model, the right feeling, the right mood, and, and she's got to be able to to do what she does best and give you, a, you know, the right kind of feeling and attitude. Yeah. Yeah. She does, without doing very much, she does it very well. And the dress is such a ju juxtaposition of the rest of it, which I think is so interesting too. Uh, so this is cool. Okay, let's move on to the next one. These are cool. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. The 
people like this kind of stuff and i do like this kind of stuff in the sense of you know your your cross processing the, the the look years ago we would do this with printing you know and you, uh, you today you can do it on the computer you know it, it's really basically the style is exactly what it is and the picture is exactly what it is but we've bleached it out we've turned some into uh cross processing effect around by you know the half of the face and the other half and then turn one eye different to the other and just gave it a different kind of mood but what you see is really what it was in the sense of the hair and everything which you can't really see much of that anyway i'm but, wondering i'm wondering about um you know one of the things that I think people get so stuck in is what they're expected to do and i feel like creativity can't come out unless you do things that almost you can't put anywhere other than you know like like what I mean is, you know how um, uh, from a create like if you wanted to sit down and do a you know some sort of um, mosaic or like this almost reminds me of you know where you would take you know pieces of um, a magazine or something like that and you just start gluing them kind of down. The yeah. thing that I think that's where creativity comes from is doing things that we haven't done before and then expanding on that. And I think that you know you see something anywhere. I think that people's eyes are either open to creativity or they're not because it's it's something that you wouldn't expect that would would probably you need, to, you need to experiment you need to try different things i think when yeah. you get into photography there's so much you can play with it's endless yeah there's a million, billions of things you can do and looking at what's been done Look, you know, I, I don't see many pictures like that but you know they, it all depends on what your subject and what you've done and you know there was the motivation of getting the glass and making a different size and then you know but then we played around and changed the different colors and working you know with uh, great assistants and which are great photographers as well you know and, uh, and working with people that have know how to use all these tools is important but it's very important to know what you want to try and achieve and then to try and guide and get and get where you want to be and I, and I think that you know this is a good example of you know just breaking the boundaries and not worrying about it yeah um, this was, uh, you did, um, th is this hanging in the library? Uh, it's hanging at, um, it's hanging in um, the uh, at Bedded Studio. Oh, the Bedded. one in the library is a, is a different one. I think we, we might see it in a second. Okay. But it, um, Heather, yeah. go ahead and move on. Oh, yeah, this is oh, so no, no, this, uh, this was, you know, I was motivated and very, um, you know, impressed with a photographer called Bellum Rap. And that was uh, basically in the 80s and, and 90s. And um, he is Spanish, Spanish photographer. He then stopped doing it and became just a sculptor and artist. And then he's a lecturer and a teacher. Um, you know, he, he was doing all the Vogues. He was doing so much great stuff. But all his pictures were multicolored and multi, you know, shadows and everything. And, uh, you know, and, and when he saw it, when I first saw him, how the hell is that done? You know, so amazing. The simplicity of it was, you know, it would have loads of little tiny lights that would reflect all the colors. But then he would then take, you know, strips of, you know, color out of the arm and then make it like it had a shadow on it, you know, and, and do that afterwards. So it was his own form of painting, but with photography. And I think, you know, you know my brother loves painting, you know, and, and, I, and I, we're all artistic, but you know, I don't, I don't like painting, but I like painting over photographs. This one hasn't been done that, but I like to do that and then do my own version. I remember doing that quite, you know, many years ago, but then still occasionally it's, it's something that kind of motivates me and doing, and doing the bits of collage where you cut up a picture and, yeah have one picture, have five of them, cut them all up, and then put all the different pictures that are the same picture together, but they're all slightly different sizes. Yeah. And it gives you something else, you know. It's not always pretty, but it's uh, very creative. Um, but this one was a, a, a photographer called Venom Rat, was very inspiring. And, you know, just using his kind of technique of photography to really then shine and bring out things with hair. So then, then again, that was, you know, getting, getting motivated. You know, I wasn't, I didn't want to become a photographer. Hey, look, I want to be a photographer. And that's, I wanted to capture hair. And the only way I could be in control of that was by being, doing photography. And then eventually it kind of got to a point where you could do anything you want and, and you can learn how to do whatever you want. And, and uh, it was a great way of sharing the kind of hair that you're, you're doing. I think that's really what it was about. This is, you, you know, know yeah, this is beautiful. No, go ahead, sorry, sorry. Avant garde part of this, yeah. Go ahead, but then that was unusual hair as well, yeah. you know. That was all you know, ch hair chipped up and made into like you know, loads of little pieces, and then slowly put on top, gluing it, gluing it, and spray, and it just bigger and bigger. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't really, we used it in a show, but the whole thing trailed all the way to we lost <laughs> by, the, by the time she got to back to the to the you know, backstage, the hairstyle from being that big became that big. So, wow, that's <laughs> uh, funny. Then this was where we started gelling the hair and then cutting asymmetric shapes. 
And I think the one that I, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't get because it was only a, a few pictures to give you. I, I didn't give that other one. Where on top of that, we did that little bit of graphic where I worked again with that the, the girl called Lenore, and and she worked and put like different layers on top. So the hair was always in Pat did this man. Pat was doing tattoos at that time, you know, just getting tattoos and and you know the ones that you could buy and whatever. And she'd do all these strange ones and then start making the eyebrows out of them and and just getting some different effects, which was at the time, you know, really effective and, uh, and really good. But then we did a lot of graphics on that. But this was then using a, you know, a 5.4 Polaroid system, even though it was shot digitally, and then, you know, using that distance. It, we, we did at that time shoot on 5.4, and we did it digital. And, but then to get a, you know, a sharper picture like that, we had to put the real one in. But, but we used a lot of the ones that were the original 5.4 Polaroids which gave it a whole different flavor. You know, it was always trying to use an old style to, to you know, capture something modern. Well, it's, uh, kind of, it's kind of got like this, like, tribal look, but yet like this super modern, you know, with the geometric lines, and it's really an interesting shot. And then, of course, yeah. we've got with that black and white, uh, not quite sepia, but it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. And again, I want to just bring attention also to the way that you shadowed um, that, the top, you know, the top section, yeah. Um, you know, right up to the um, the edge where her nose is. Again, that lighting just has such a huge effect on on the picture. Um, it's it's always amazing if you kept that super dark. Um, it would look just completely different. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think you know you. It's good looking back at a lot of the things because it can spur you on to really then shoot them in a different way, so you capture them in today's kind of feeling of photography as well, and um, you know, and try and. You know, I think the, 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 what you what you shoot, the content is the key, really. You know, capturing that content, the way that you express it is, is important. But yeah. it's one of the ones I really like. I like it because yeah, it, was it, good, it was a good time when we were really messing around with hair. Where but, was that? Um, that? That was... Um, around. When, when was that? Yeah. That, uh, it was in the, um, I would say, about a couple of years before 2009. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Heather. Oh, yeah. I This is definitely one of, yeah, Alexander McQueen. Yeah, yeah. I, li I like this one a lot. It was, uh, it was when we, we used it mainly for the shows and everything. And you know what? It, it turned out we were doing so many great things for the shows, but actually not photographing them because we, we were ending up doing a lot of kind of presentations and stuff and taking it with us. And one thing that we found was that all of a sudden we weren't, we didn't have a really nice collection of what we were doing. So it was, uh, it was part of the, doing, um, a backstage kind of yeah load of shots where she's getting ready to go on yeah she looks a bit too posed there but you know at the time it was right and, and you know we, we were trying to capture that again capturing it for for film was always important because you know that's some of the thing, one of the things that you know became very important to us to, to have moving stills that's what they are you know it's, it's having a still that moves and gives you a little bit more of a story than just one image and um <clears throat> and i think um, yeah, that whole show, because you guys did that one in 3D, right? That's right, yeah. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, you guys are passing out all the 3D images, and usually I would get a chance to see everything in advance, you know, or going backstage, but um, to see it in 3D was just so cool. And I think it's just always, like, really pushing the boundaries, and some of those incredibly tall models that you had. That's was, right, yeah. You know, I know, we'd, we'd have uh, six, seven inches on their hair, six, seven inches on their feet, and they were six foot. Yeah, they were, was, yeah, yeah, they're ginormous, which was great, you know, and it really gave a great impression. But yeah, yeah. That, that, that was quite, um, that was a lot of fun. We were always trying to find out different ways of capturing image. I think that's really what it's all about. And I think that's what One Shot does, you know, it's, it, it's at, the at the real kind of heart of everyone capturing what they do. You know, hair, hair when you do hair, it's, uh, it's uh, temporary, you know, when, once you've done it, the lady goes, she's gone. I know. A bit of art. The only way you're going to create or, or have some form of documentation is to take a picture of it, whatever you're doing, you know? And I think that was from a very early situation was something that, you know, my brother loved, loved doing. And then, you know, obviously it became something that me and Pat kind of took over and did a lot. And, um, you know, and, and still do, I think it's still very much part. And then it goes into moving film as well, which is the same thing. Yeah. Documenting what we do, which is art on somebody, but that is temporary, it's gone. You know, once she goes, it's gone. Once you've done it, you've done it. Yeah. I've always wondered, like we've been saying this for so many years, very few companies um, that do shows actually 
capture the images of what they've done. And for the most part, if you're doing really intricate braids or anything like that, nobody sees it on stage anyway. So I just feel like you've done all that work. You've got them. I mean, they're, they look amazing, right? And if you're not documenting it, you get to never see it again. Yeah, and I think, yeah it's so important to capture everything. I think it's a, uh, and you know, we've got such an easy way of doing it today, you know, but it's still, you know, you can have all the tools in the world, just got to know what to do and what you want to capture and have a reason. Then, then I think it's uh, very, very relevant. So I want to, so let's go ahead and finish the images. And then I have some questions I want to ask you just about what you just said about collections. We talked, we looked at that one. And then yeah, that's, we looked at that. that's yeah. I think we've probably gone through them all. Yeah. Just do a quick flick. I want to ask you some questions, um, Anthony, first of all, because I know that there are also like a lot of hotshot, you know, winners and finalists that are so close to being able to do big shot work, you know, that like really, um, so I want to talk with you a little bit about, it's one of the things that we're going to be doing at the BTC house coming up really soon is to start doing actual classes. Um, go, Heather, you can go ahead and move us both to the center. Thanks. Um, is to do is to do classes just based on how people actually create collections. So talk, walk us through, um, like, where do people begin? Like, you begin with this mood board, it's, right? So talk us through just very quickly, how do people get started with creating a collection? Well, I think, um, you know, basically, we, we when we start off, I think it's very important to, first, to have the idea of what you want to do, right? We want to do a collection. What's the collection? We want to do, you know, a progression of our cuts or we want to do something avant-garde or we want to do you know a mixture of what's going on with fashion at the moment and how we interpret the hair so once once you have a, a little bit of an idea and i think that the mood board then turns into um, a mood board for hair a mood board for you know just what you like as an image you know what what you like as an image a mood board for clothes a mood board for photography and you know we also do one for color and we do one for cut. So when you have all these mood boards, then you have an idea in your mind, right, what is the style of photography you want? You narrow that right down to the kind of thing that you, you want to do. Now, with us, it's, 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 it's internal. You know, we, we're, we're not like um, art directors getting someone else to do it. We're, we're the ones that actually shoot it. And we, what I've done within uh, uh, TG, you know, I, I have Alex now, who's, you know, he's fantastic. He does the campaigns. You know, I don't need to do them. He does them. And, and but you know, we still work together, and we have um, we have the the team that really kind of progress on that. We have Akush, we have Thomas. They work on okay, we're going to do a new modern classic. Let's say let's not do the same thing as we do. Let's do something fresh and different, but relevant to what people want. What is it for? So then you find all the, the kind of hairstyles that you want. Then you do the same with color. What what do we want to do with that with color? So if I use modern classics as a, as a, an example, you've got an array of of, of um, needs for that collection. That collection is to help people move to the next step with what they're doing already in a, in a classic way and in you know, you know uh, an avant-garde way. Because everything you do avant-garde needs the classics anyway. So we, we had that kind of discussion and forum about how, how we want to take that further. Then we have a look at, if you want to make it modern, you can't shoot it classic. But let's shoot it classic because we still want to show that. And then let's shoot it out in the streets because we want to show that. Then let's shoot it inside of something that we feel really kind of on track. So you, you shoot it in three different ways yeah. to, to then create the whole story for the modern classics. So that's quite a large kind of um, thing that you need to prepare. And it goes, and then you go through each style, each cut, each color, and, and work with that. But if you're creating something that is a little bit for yourself and, and for, for a salon and, and, and for, you know, because we're, we're, we're doing a whole kind of educational system in, in that kind of bit. But when you're creating, for yourself you need the right kind of model you need to know what you want to do you've got to you've got to create a mood board of where you want to go and i don't mean you know you might copy what you're seeing and you know in your own interpretation but you still need to have something to follow too so you're getting to what you think oh, I, I love it if it looks like that and then you have that as an idea with the photography and then you have the ideas of the hair and and the kind of feeling that you want to interpret clothes when you get clothes involved it makes it even harder uh, because you really got to have the right kind of mouth, and it, and it dates the photo very, very quickly. It, it dates it to the fashion that you're doing, depending how you do that fashion. And, and I think, you know, you can't avoid dating. I don't think that's a problem. You can't avoid it that becomes old or, you know, it, you, know but you, you can sometimes make the times, you know, in, in a way that you, you photograph it in the way that you capture all those moods. But I think more than anything, the model is very, very important. Even if it's Capturing someone who is living that look, the model is the you know is the key to to getting that expression out. And so, you know, so I think the model is very key, and the 
what you're going to be doing. And I want to talk about the model for a second, because I think that the model is, again, where I think when people say, you know, how do I miss? I think it's all, it's often the model. And so the one thing that I would suggest is like when you're looking at models, you know, when you're thinking about who your model is going to be, go to the other pictures of the of the images that, you know, that have inspired you and look at the models, like look at our, you know, are their eyes separated? Are their noses longer? Are their faces longer? Or sort of like you really, really have to look at them because I think that people will try to create different looks. And then if the model is wrong, the whole shot's going to be wrong. And I, I think people- I think you've got to look at their books, some of you, look at their books and how they look and, and yeah. how they look in the photographs that they had. I mean, the majority of us are using you know, you say professionals, you know, someone in an agency is a professional model. You're looking for a certain kind of look. And it's difficult to see that sometimes when you're live. You've got to see how she photographed and how that's how. And that's, that's obviously why girls have, um, and guys have their books and, and, you know, and their portfolios. So you can really get behind that. But it is, it is key figuring out is that we, we try and find when someone's really unusual and looks unusual and has that real kind of style already. And you think, wow, oh, she's going to look great. And you just... You know, it's, it's not always a pretty model that you need. It's someone with, that's very interesting yeah. and it has a really interesting look. You know? and, but it varies depending on what you're doing. But I, like, I agree with you 100%. The model yeah, models. I, I want to talk about uh, diversity as well because obviously inclusivity and diversity have, have been, you know, very hot points over the last couple of weeks and honestly over the last several years. And one of the things I've always noticed about you and TG is you guys have always used a very, very diverse range of models. Um, and I think that's awesome. We always have um, with so many different hair textures. Um, I remember one of the black models that you guys had that's a hundred feet tall. I mean, she was all legs, and it was just yeah. you know, she was uh, yeah she was amazing. She was amazing. Good eyes yeah. off of you know what I mean? Like it was just one of those things. It was well, just it's, it's strange because you know we we um, since I started in Fringe four years ago, we've got about. 50 stories on yeah, infringe is about um, um, anthropology of hair. It's about people's culture. Yeah. It's a, you know, anthropology is about culture. And the whole purpose of the magazine is to, to share with everyone everything that we don't do. You know, so it's everything that we don't do, what I've done in hairdressing, it's to share everything else. And what's out there is incredible. You know, and we had a friend of mine go to South Africa and do a story on a barber who was in a gang and then barber in saved his life and, and then lots of different stories like that. And then also, you know, the, how the barbers that do black hair work completely different from the way our barbers do and how they, and, and it's, it's uh, really great. You're not there to give an opinion, you're there to share what's going on. And I think that's what's, um, what's uh, really good. I've been, you know, I'm not there every day at the moment, I'm not there at all, but you know, we're, we're putting up the stories that we have, have been doing over the last three, four years. And they're, they're, there's such a lot of diversity and a lot of creativity and a lot of different kind of, people wear their hair for a certain reason. People learn how to do that hair through, through different, you know, avenues, you know, through, through family, through at home, through lots of different elements that teach you what you end up knowing. And, uh, and I think that, you know, we need to know a little bit more about that. And, and, You've got to stick to what you do. You've got to work with what you know, but there's always room to learn more and more and more and add to that. And I think that's what's important about, you know, what's going on. In the world. I think that's what I love about Instagram is so many hairdressers have taught themselves so many new techniques and then share those techniques with everybody else. And I think that's really cool because we didn't see that as much, you know, years and years ago. So I want to ask you some final questions. When you're a judge, because you judge a lot of different competitions, what are you looking for? Like, what are the key, key things that like really turn you on about a certain shot and turn you off about a certain shot? Um, I can't really say. It, it, it depends. When you look at something that stands out, you notice it. You know, you can look at 20 shots all on the wall and there'd be a two or three that will just jump out at you, hopefully. You know, that will say, I, you know, I like that. You know, I think sometimes you can study it, study it, study it, study it. And, you know, I like to go on my first impulse and my first kind of feeling. You know, and you know, I'll, I'll double check and, and look through, but it's always, you know, I usually that's usually what I feel more comfortable with. And, and what I'm looking for really is something that looks fresh, different, and stands out. And it's difficult to say what that is. I think um, to try and get that and to try and make that work is a bit like what we were saying before preparation, yeah. doing all that kind of thing. But capturing that, everything is gelled perfectly together. You've got the right look, the right girl, the right style. 
the right attitude and it, and it pops out. And I think that, you know, it's hard to do it with one shot. But if you do, then, you know, you've got it. I know. You know and I think sometimes if you try and do too many, then you, you can also then lose it too. Honestly, why we called it one shot because there's we always say like you know when we were when we had the magazine and I really want to bring it back again because it's just so it's so fun to yeah. do just to post hair like it's so fun to see it and work with it in pages instead of just on Instagram which is the same shot the same size every single time it's so fun to be able to take large shots and smaller shots and and build a collage of them together mm -hmm. and, um, but there, we always said like that's why we called it one shot there's always one shot in a collection. <laughs> stands out uh, you know i think i think that's what's great about it because you know it puts everybody on a, on a an even an even platform you know because you can, we can all do one model and really focus on that but it's hard to have a whole collection this that and the other and, you know it gets expensive it gets different it's you know but doing it as a one-shot thing it, it, it does work great because you've got you know got everyone's got the opportunity to do something special yeah and i think that's what, it, what it's about really and they yes. can on their iPhone, really. I mean, they really can. There's a lot of uh, big shots. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's amazing stuff. It's amazing, you know. And, and the more you get it out there, the more people see it. I know we've got a different platform today, which is Instagram and Facebook and all these uh, elements. But I think it, it's what's there today, and we've got to use that to the maximum and share it, what, everything we can to see, you know, what's inspiring and how people can be motivated by being people, people being inspired by them. I yeah. think that's really what it's about. What would, um, so I just want to ask you one more question about you guys. So are you, is it, is it, are you feeling off because you're not doing shows right now? You guys are so used to doing so many shows and being on the road. Well, How I tell you what, you know, we're, being under the Unilever banner, you know, we take, they take things very seriously and we've got to, they're, you know, very serious about what's going on in the world, the pandemic and everything. So, you know, we won't be traveling for a while, but it doesn't mean we can't connect. And I think, you know, when you travel, I'm going to be honest, it, it's about getting to where you're going and connecting with the people that you're going to see and going to do the show with. If we can still do that, which we can, we yeah. can still connect with, our, with our, you know, our TG family, our TG community, which is basically you know, who, who I you know, work with and, and you know, what our priority is. If we can still connect with them and not necessarily have to travel, then I'm happy not to travel at the moment. When yeah. we can do that, I think it would be great. And like I said at the beginning, it's almost given us a whole new way of co communicating that will just add to what we used to do because yeah. we will do what we used to do. Yeah. You know, we travel and whatever, but we'll have so much more communication and you know, we'll know the people so much better by in, in, in working with this system and, and, you know, with zoom and all these different things and yeah. you know, working with that and connecting with people. And they don't have to be loads of people. You know I mean? Eventually I, I think it'd be great to do, you know, when we used to do our world release, which we did one uh, uh, last year, in fact, um, you know, do one online, that's a virtual one, you know, and try and make it so everyone, you're still connecting with everyone. Well, it'd be lovely to do the real thing, absolutely, you know, but if we can't, we shouldn't say, oh, we have to wait, whatever. We can do these online. We can communicate with our, our clients. We can we can get them to have a voice. We can, you know, share with them what they can be doing. Yeah. We can do what we've always done, but we do it through the computer. You know, and for us, like we have, you know, our BTC University, which we've had for the last couple of years, and yeah. And I think the thing that's been so great about that is you get these world class and all these new hairdressers that have, you know, not necessarily new, but they have new techniques that show and that have really built through Instagram. And when we did the pandemic happened, instead of like all of those videos being 1995 or 2495, which was not expensive to begin with to get 90 minutes of education, we like literally put all of those together, 100 hours of education, and then made it free for three days, and then 1995. It's our BTC binge bundle at BTC University. It is a- I think you know, you, you've started this, you know, you, you've used this technology before anyone else. Yeah. You know, and, I, and I think I commend a, you on that in the sense of how, you know, it works. It, you know, it's not just like great in the US and Canada, but like people have taken classes from over 90 countries, and some of these countries have very little education. And so it's amazing to see that all of us can educate people around the world. And there's no way at a world release or even at, at our big BTC show, there's no way we can touch that many people. You know, no. so it's it's amazing that we can reach out. And, and yes, it's not the same thing as being at a show where you can hug people and you can, yeah. you know, and you can do all of that, but it, it sure allows us to be able to make these kinds of connections. And would we be doing this right now had, you know, had this not happened? So I do think that this isn't going to go away. I agree with you completely. I think it's a no. great opportunity for all of us to. Yeah, it's, a, it's a fantastic opportunity. It allows us to really see how, 
you know, it's not about technology. It's about communication and, and connection. And, and, you know, it's always been there in its way, but we, you know, we, we, you've used it, you know, I can only put my hands up, you know, you used to, first one to start digital magazine, you know, in, in, in our profession. I think that is the, you know, uh, pioneering and, and, you know, entrepreneurial, absolutely. And then today, you know, what we have is that we need to be able to use this technology and, and work our creativity in the best way that we can share it and share what we want to do on there. You know, at the moment we can't do models and, you know, we can't do like people, but you can do lots of different things, you know, and you, and you can get things together and you can communicate. I think that there's so much education on, on Instagram. For, for me, one of the things I said to the team, we're not going to do cuts on, you know, mannequins. People have got a lot of choice out there, you know, and we can drive them to our old videos. We can drive them to views. And if anything, you know, look on Instagram. There's a ton of stuff, you know, to go to BTC, go to all the different places. You can get that everyday education to that, you know, if that's what you need. But I think what, but as time went on, we knew that people needed to be in contact and, yeah. and not necessarily just part of a big group, but just, you know, part of a small group that then you can actually say something and your name's called out and you are somebody. And, and it's so important to make it that we all have it so, you know, it becomes a little bit more personal. Like we always do as hairdressers. We love that. We do it with our clients. We do it with our clients that are hairdressers. We do it when we go to a show. We create that contact. We create that kind of, you know, communication. I think this is, a, you know, God sent that we've got this, that we can yeah. carry on that and build on it and make it part of our routine every week. Well, and also it gives us a chance for everybody to get to know, you know, for us to get to know them and them to get to know us. And then when we do have an event, it's like we all know each other, you know, and that's the cool thing is like we've been able to interact together online. And I think that's one of the, the fun things about One Shot when everybody gets together in the rooms and, you know, the all the nominees. It's like they all know each other already from Instagram. They've never met, but they know each other. And that, like, there's nothing like that Saturday night party where they all get to it's meet. An amazing um, community of, uh, of yeah. you know, you know, DC community and, and family. And I yeah. think that's really, you know, it doesn't matter how big that gets. It may, people want to belong to something, and it's great. You know, it's, it's created that belonging. Well, thank you. So um, one final piece of advice, Anthony, for young hairdressers that are out there. like. No, absolutely. You know, young hairdressers, stick with it. Go for it. If you really love hairdressing, then this is your you know choice for your life. Then all you got to do is keep learning, keep getting better, and really be proud of being a hairdresser. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. I love you. Yeah, um, good luck to you too. I miss you and Pat, and uh, I miss our times at Nobu and drinking. Yeah, me too. Me too. Well, they'll come back, I'm sure. I know. I'll, sure. I'll, I'll go and get a, a vodka now. This water's running out. So. Uh, I know. Okay. Yeah, you do that. <laughs> I'll, I'll do that too. Is it Friday yet? No, it's like yeah, no, no, it's Monday. It's Monday. But who knows? I don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. It's like every day is the same day at the moment at home. I know, it's Groundhog Day. Sunday, you're still doing things on Saturday, but oh. you get confused. Anyway, it's Father's Day in England next week, next Sunday. Oh. So I'm looking forward to that. We have it too. So yeah, yeah lots of love to you and Pat, the grand yeah, Thank you very much, and uh, keep keep doing what you're doing. It's the best. Thank you, you too. Lots I of I, I don't know what to do to get off here. Oh yeah, here, leave studio. So lots of love, Mary. Uh, and bye thank bye. you very much for inviting me to come on. And this is uh yeah, meet the judges, you guys. And uh, we've got a lot of judges coming up uh all week this week and next week. So thanks again, Anthony. Lots of love. Lots of love to you. Bye everyone.